What's up, guys? How you doing? It's all good. Everybody's undefeated. Bearcase sick. So it's going around. It's that time of year. Doesn't matter if it's little kids or college kids, back yeah. to school, the germs start. <laughs> So you weren't kidding when you said you were going to wear this to a... Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be a billboard, man. <laughs> Support. I need the praying hands, please. <laughs> Support Mount of Westfield. So some of the new players that have come in lately that weren't with you during summer, Berke... Yeah, Berke had died. Um, I know you, you knew them pretty well. You've seen them play a lot. What, what's your impressions of them so far? Um, well, they're, Burke's a, uh, a little stronger physically than a die, um, and he's a year older, so which you can tell when you, you know, you see see them both up close in the face. A die still looks like he's fifteen, but uh, although he's seven three, but um, yeah, Burke's probably just played against older guys and had more experience. Um, you know, a die's got crazy skill level. Um, but again, a problem with being forced uh, internationally, you're forced to play on, on you know, pro teams. And if you're playing on a pro team and you're 17, you're not gonna play. So you don't get a lot of playing time. They play 90 games, so they hardly ever practice. They're no different than NBA teams. So you don't get a lot of reps. So uh, it's an adjustment for those guys to practice, you know, obviously, you know, it, where they're from, it's like the NBA. It's training camp four or five days, and they start playing exhibitions. And then, you know, here you get, you know, six weeks of practice, which is very new for them. Uh, but it's what they need. That's why it's just way, way better development uh, venue to be in the college basketball for a young kid because they need they need to be in there. They need to learn. They need reps instead of standing on the side watching, you know, guys making a million dollars play where they're from. So. Burke is a little ahead of, uh, of a die. Coach, how are, you, how are you imparting your defensive philosophies on a team with so many new players? A lot of teaching. And what you got to do is remind yourself they don't know. Uh, trained or untrained is how I look at it. And I remind, try to remind my staff constantly. You know, when I get in the car, uh, I drive with my left hand and, and put my right hand on the console every day. It's called a habit. They have no defensive habits, and it's not their fault. So uh, you can't just think, well, we worked on that yesterday. It takes, like, sometimes two months, sometimes two years to get guys to habitually do the right things defensively, on the ball, off the ball, blocking out, just all, all the fundamental things. Um, so that's why older teams tend to have the advantage. With, that's why rookies rarely play in the playoffs in the NBA. Um, we got a lot of work to do. So you got to remind my staff and myself, you know, just because we've been working on it for a week, it's still not a habit for them. So it's just a lot of repetition, a lot more film with the younger team. You just have to a lot more, do a lot more teaching. Uh, so it slows you down a little bit. We're going to have to be more simple to get to the crux of your question. Because you, you gotta, you can't be the jack of all trades and master of none. So we got to figure out you know, how, how can we get solid on both ends uh, and don't give them too much, and then they get good at nothing. So we believe in the fundamentals. So we got to keep it simple and just repetition every day. Do you like having a blank slate? Um, I think it's healthy. You know, and what I've thought about, like with college basketball, um, you know, like Tiger could have been here a sixth year. But for his life and his career and evolution, it's it's healthy for him. It's healthy for Dylan. It'll be painful early <laughs> for us. But I think it's healthy for Tiger to start building his pro career and experience life. Uh, he's turning 24, I think, or 23 at least. I know. So, um, but uh, no, sometimes it, uh, it is healthy in the evolution of it, but it's painful because you have to train it. You know, we're in a business where you get some really good players, just like a business, and you train them, you reap the benefits of it. But here, they graduate or they go pro, and you got to start over. That's what makes college coaching so challenging at times. But that's part of it. So you have to embrace it. 
and I just have one more. In your process here at UCLA, every year you've been here, you've had a better record than the year before. I did not know that. I'm not sure if you knew that. Are you sure about that? I trust you. Am I right? Or am I wrong? I think so. I right. think so. I, I looked it up. Hey, he's not technical. You're, you what do you mean? What are you talking so, about? So Dave, I, yeah. you, you would know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think you've had a better record than every year the previous year. Yeah, I would say, I mean, last year was our best team. Mm -hmm. And I really felt if we had stayed healthy here, I would have made us favorite to win the championship. Um, so uh, I don't know if that's realistic every year. Uh, that's twice I've done that in my career. My first six years at Cincinnati, we pulled that off. Which means it was painful early. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the evolution piece is part of it. For us here, I'm more focused on uh, the only record I can give you here is our NCAA tournament record. We're nine and three. With one COVID, we didn't get a shot at. It. So, you know, in three shots, we got nine tournament wins, which is pretty good. Um, and we got we try to focus on getting ready for March here. So, talking non technically. Yep. Uh, I know you built a real connection. With Tiger, yeah, like at practice and games. How's that? How are you building that kind of similar connection with Dylan? Would you say? Um, you know, it, it, it's uh, going to Europe helped us. You know, we got extra practices, got a few games in. Um, getting his mind, like with him, um, he's got to get to a point where, you know, when you're young and you're just in there, kind of resting Tiger, or you're resting Amari. And you know you're you, you don't have to play well every game. Like you don't have to show up every day. Uh, so you got to know like you're going to play through mistakes now, and you're going to be out there. And I got to be able to count on you. So a lot of that is me giving him that confidence. You know, so he that'll give him a relaxation mentally. Hopefully, that, you know he knows he's going to be out there. I know he's going to have some learning curve playing extended minutes. Um, and that's just, you know, we'll get through it together. Um, but I don't want, you know, he's a guy, Dylan's such a nice kid, um, where uh, he's just uh, sometimes too sensitive. So I got to be careful, you know, because he, he doesn't want to make a mistake. He doesn't want he doesn't want to upset me. And he's got to realize he can't worry about that all the time. So I got to help me you to know, make sure, like today he took a, you know, he took a shot. Um, I thought he was being too passive. I told him he got aggressive. He took a really good shot, and it didn't go in. But I, I, I have to have like you can't just. It's not last year, you know. You can't just run to corners and hide. So it's you know a lot of that's my job of getting him into a comfort level. Piggybacking off that, um, how how far ahead do you think you are now uh, in practice based on having gone to Spain? And how much do you think that will help you just throughout the season building off of it? Well, we didn't have, no, no Burke, no Adai. You know, Burke, you guys didn't get to see because he's, you know, like I said, he's sick. Uh, he's really sick this morning. But anyway, um, you know, it did help. There's no doubt. I didn't really know how much it helped because you were just kind of doing it till we started in the fall. And um, it wasn't the first time we were really going, doing a lot of things, the freshmen, because we, it wasn't. I was, they were better than I expected, and I'm very well. We did practice a lot in the summer, more than normal because of the, the trip to Spain. So, uh, you know, it's always good. I've been around. It's good to do it when you when you need it. When you need the, you know, we could have went last year, but you know, Jaime, I wasn't going to risk him getting hurt. Um, you know, coming off all those ankles, and we, just, you know, that team didn't. They didn't need it, uh, and I expected them to be playing until April. So. You know, sometimes you gotta gotta be careful with uh, wearing them out. But I think it's it's helped this team for sure. But look, we're gonna we, we got so far to go. The truth of this is, um, we're still working on them understanding that they are like they are the UCLA Bruins, and they are gonna decide whether we win or lose. So, um, you know, I pull out Coach Patino line every now and then. You know. I tell I tell somebody to open that door and see if Tiger's coming through. <laughs> Check if Jaime's over here. You know, nope. You get <laughs> so I hit him with that a few times already. So so they, they they've got to understand like they they're gonna have to stay together when we struggle. They're gonna have to you know understand that, that if you struggle, people are gonna judge you. It's not where you start; it's where you finish. 
just all, all the stuff that you have to do to be a good team to get through a season. Uh, you know, you can't cave in. You're not going to go undefeated. You got to learn how to take a punch and come back stronger. So they haven't done that together. Uh, but it, it, look, I'm really pleased with where we're at and the fact that Adem hasn't played live play yet. You know, I keep people come in and they make, you know, I, I ask some people I really trust, basketball people, that, you know, I had Don McLean here yesterday, you know, and I have to remind everyone, you got our best player is not in. <laughs> you know, that is a factor, you know. So, like, if we'd have been practicing last year and people, you bring people in to watch and Jaime's not out there, you know, we wouldn't have looked as good. You know, we're going to look a lot better at them bone out there. But I think it's... It's help. It's helping us get the, all these other guys reps. But when the lights come on, we need to have him ready. I, I'm well aware of that. So you're doing a lot of four on four. Is that? Yeah. Well, no Burke today, but okay. we break it up. You know, yesterday we played more five on five. Yeah. We do. We do a lot of stuff. Five on four, four on three, no dribble games. So today we're you know we're working on playing. You saw we're working on playing two big guys together. Coach, you seem like you have a lot of versatility with those wings. A lot of height, a lot of length. We've definitely taught, no question. Yeah, how exciting is that to to be able to do some different things? Well, it way. should help you defensively. Mm -hmm. You know, if you play smaller, it should help you on offense. You spread the floor, you should be able to make more shots. You can't play small and be a bad offensive team. You're in trouble. Um, if you're playing, if, but if you're going to play big, you better be really good on the glass and really good uh, defensively. Your size has to impact the game. Because other teams are going to play small and spread you out. Um, so it does give you more versatility. You know, I think we, we'll be deeper more because we're going to have to be. Because freshmen can't play 33 minutes. They just can't. You know, it's a very rare thing to have a guy like Amari or Adem that could handle those kind of minutes. Those guys were elite, elite athletes as a freshman that could handle that. Burke can maybe handle... Uh, you know, starter minutes for a long period of time. But even he's still, you know, it's new for him. So uh, we're going to have to rotate guys. The younger guys, you got to rotate them. Because young guys get tired. It's it's a house of cards, man. They don't gradually struggle. They go from playing well to awful as soon as they get tired. Turnover, foul, layup, they give up a layup. So we're going to have to be deeper. But, the, I, you know, our length is going to have to be a factor on defense in the back and offensive rebounding. This could be our best offensive rebounding team. And I would say that because multiple guys and size, not just in the paint, but on the wings as well. Alon Philbu is going to be as good offensive rebounder as a perimeter player that I've coached by the time it's all over. So that is uh, uh, Dyer's uh, ability to, you know, initiate the offense. Oh, Dyer can uh, play offense. Uh, just as far as, you know, his <laughs> pass can go. He can play. And everything. Yeah. Well, uh, he can score, too. Though, so. Right. And I was just going to ask you, uh, do you have to, I guess, uh, be patient with him as far as when to initiate the offense, when to attack, and that sort of thing? Just got trying to – he had the tendency to gamble too much. Um, you know, he thinks he's a quarterback in football. He likes football. He does, he's the only European wow. guy that doesn't like soccer. So he couldn't wait to get here. All he wanted to do was he was at the first, he was at the North Carolina Central game. <laughs> I mean, he could not wait to get to a football game. So I told him to look. At, he's got to look up Brett Favre. You know, <laughs> great great quarterback had to learn to stop trying to force passes. So you know, you got he doesn't do any good to be a great passer, but you keep trying to thread. You know, assist turnover, assist turnover. So you know, he has to. You know, he's he's been. And explain to him turnover equals bench. <laughs> yeah, how much will you, you you know you've been known for the quick hook, so to speak. Uh, with with so many freshmen, are you going to have to maybe back off on that a little bit? Um, but I, I'm more of a, of uh, you know I'm just trying to win. You guys turn the ball over; it's hard to win. Uh, but I would say that uh, the fatigue is just going to be the key. You know, fatigue is going to be more strategy is going to be the you know that. As far as in coaching, you, you don't ask guys. If you are asking guys to do things that they're not ready to do, you're in trouble. Because they're not going to be, if they're not, you got to judge what is it, what can he do, what is he capable of defensively as a freshman. And it, you better figure that out 
Because uh, if you say, well, this is how I want to do it, and he can't do it yet, it's bad coaching. You got to adjust. So it's not a being patient, it's having the right strategy. You know, what, you know, how much can he get now? If he, you got to be able to get it, you know, he can't just get pushed around and, you know, like he and Devin, Kenny tends to throw everybody around. We're pretty physical in practice. We allow a lot of that, trying to get them ready. But strategically, we're going to have to figure out when we have freshmen out there, what what can they handle? Is Lazar kind of the... He can handle anything. That, he can of, handle anything. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to worry about it. How important is a guy like that with all... Well, for my sanity, you got to have some older guys. You know, Lazar has helped my sanity, you know. That somebody that can be in the right spot that I don't have to worry about all the time. And he helps other guys get in the right spot. When you're talking stamina for a uh, freshman, is it a, a real issue for a 7 3 freshman, would you say? What was his? Oh, yeah. yeah. But again, I, I would go back to a dies past of, you know, being on a pro team. Like, you know, Jan Vide played for Real Madrid's, uh, he was, he, he, you know, he's at their academy team you know, where he's their best player. You know, he wasn't playing for Real Madrid's big team in the ACB league. The guy was playing against, he was on Zaragoza's real team. Well, you, you, know, you go game after, you go, you go a month and play five minutes. And they practice maybe twice because they had 13 games that month. It's like the NBA. So, you know, it's, it's hard to get better, but it's also hard to get your conditioning up. So like this month of practice, it would have been great to have him all summer. He, he you know, more so than Burke, like, you know, Adai, like he, Adai needs college basketball to be ready for when his day comes in the NBA. I mean, he, you know, you see just, he turned 18 in April. He's just a baby, you see his face. And, but he, he, like, he needs college basketball, you know, the, of playing, you know, playing minutes, getting reps, the way college basketball, the way we practice to get better. I mean, he, he but, I like him finishing better than I like him initiating. Trust me when I tell you, you know, you, uh, Don McLean, 2608, is it? Buckets. <laughs> you know, somebody got to score now. You know, all that initiating is great. You know, somebody got to score. You only play so much defense. How are you feeling about the outside shooting so far? Uh, I think that we'll, we, we uh, will be better off at that because of our interior game. Like my, my belief in that, this goes way, you know, way back to my early times with Coach Huggins. He used to talk about pressure on the rim. You, know, you got big guys that can that can plant themselves in front of the rim. You put so much pressure on the rim that guys are wide open. It's just a you know, you're not having to dribble for threes and sprint <clears throat> sprint around for threes. And, there, you put so much pressure with size on the rim is what we're trying to do that if guys, if we're shooting threes, guys are wide open. But again, I really think they, I think offensive rebounding is going to have to be a big part of us. I just, I know when you play big, I've done it before, my back in the old Big East days. Um, you play big, uh, like you say you go to play a team. I remember I played Marquette a long time ago, my buddy Buzz Williams, Jimmy Butler, and uh, they were good, like really good. Jimmy Butler's senior night, we just played zone. We played big, so we just played zone the whole game. So we're, we're not coming out of it because they're – if we try to match them playing small to match up a smaller guy with Jimmy Butler, their small is better than our small. So, you know, if our big – you're going to have to match up. If you have to match up with our big, you know, when we, we can always just play zone on the other end. But we got to – you got to take care of the ball. You got to dominate the glass. When, when you play like that. So you were working on two bigs, mm -hmm. you said. So we'll, is the intention is that we'll be seeing a die? And well, see, there is a uh, Bur Burke and Brandon. Y'all know, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. But Bur Burke and Brandon are bigger guys than Jaime. I mean, Jaime played a lot bigger than he was, than he is. You know, you're going to find out when you turn on the first heat game, Jaime's not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> you put him in an NBA game, he's not that tall. You put him with those guys. Um, you know, Brandon Williams is bigger than big. You know, right now he's bigger and stronger, and he's taller, and he's only 17. So even he is, a, you know, can play big. Although he's got guard skills. So, 
even when Burke and Brandon are playing, they're playing bigger. But I know, like, the question that uh, everybody – sub coach? The all Everybody wants to ask is, you know, like the guy and the dem playing together? Oh, yeah. I hope so. I hope so. There was a moment when Brandon Williams went up and got a layup with, like, three people taller than him. Yeah. And then also got a three. What can That's you- when I told uh, Coach Savino, he says, t- guys from Queens are a lot tougher than guys from Jersey City. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of versatility does he bring as both being able to Yeah, he, he's our uh, – he's, like, he, he's got a lot of high man. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of high man. Big, you bigger. Um, but a tough kid. You know, where he's from, there he's got no fear. Um, and uh, he's skilled. He really knows the game, too. He really knows. You put that kid in a high school game back at Christ the King with uh, my buddy Joe Arbitello, uh, where he could, he could, from an age standpoint, he should be. He, I mean, he's the top 25 player in the country. I saw a couple other things. Uh, Will McClendon deflections. Go I was over. waiting. I was waiting for you guys. I wasn't going to bring it up. Making shots. You know, I know, look, I know, I know Will had a rough year at times last year, but I kept telling you, you know, he didn't play a senior year in high school. He had it. You know, some people have ACLs and they come back like it's nothing. And then he, he, he had a traumatic ACL. And it took him over a year to come back, if you remember. And he didn't shed the brace till almost January. So just from a mental standpoint, he's a different player. You know, and uh, those of us, not just myself, uh, that, you know, Grant Rice uh, is, you know, I think he's won 13 state titles. He's one of the best high school coaches in America. I mean, he knows players now, you know. So I got, I, 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 I'm not here to put pressure on Will. I'm just going to tell you guys, he's going to be a pleasant surprise for our fans. Pleasant surprise. And- uh, maybe not a surprise, but just continued development. Kenny looks really yeah. clean. He's so lean. And then, uh, yeah, I give, Co- you know, Co- Coach Savino has done a great job with Kenny. But I- I've always said this, you know, like people ask me about like transfers or developing players. And you got to do it all in this era. You got to be able to, you can't say I'm not taking transfers. You can't say I'm not developing any players. I want all transfers. I, you you got to try to put the best team you can together. But you know I believe in player development. If a guy's got a great attitude and he's got toughness, uh, those guys all work hard. If you have a great attitude and you're a tough guy and you'll do hard things, uh, you're going to get better. It's why, like, when I got the job and Jules Bernard led the Pac-12 in turnovers, I knew he was going to become a good player. And people would say, you know, you say I had to take him out because the reason I was taking him out with the quick hook to break him of the of the habits that were making him not a good player. And once we got that out of him, I knew he was going to be a good player because Jules Bernard's a great guy with a great attitude, with tremendous toughness. And, you know, he helped us win a lot of games, a whole lot of games, you know. So I just believe in those kind of guys. They're just certain, you know, like Kenny, you had to get him in better shape, get him to relax. Nervous wreck, he makes a mistake, you know. Same with Dylan. I got to make sure that he can't be afraid to make a mistake. And that's on me. And with Kenny playing so many big games last year, I'm assuming that's going to help him confidence-wise. I mean, playing key minutes in tournaments. And- yeah. Well, you still got a guy, still got a guy who's played in the Final Four on our team. That's you know, that's a plus. He's nine and three. Kenny's nine and three in NCAA tournament games, and he's helped win some of those games. And I would just tell you, you know, look, the the play of the game last year uh, when we lost the, in the Sweet 16 was when Kenny tried to take a charge and he got hit in his hip, and he couldn't feel his leg the rest of the game. And he, you know, it happened in the Cal game, and he was out almost two weeks. He get, he's had a pinched nerve in his hip, and he tried to take the charge to start the second half. And he couldn't go. He couldn't even go get a rebound. He was trying to play because we didn't have anybody else that could, you know, be stop Timmy or at least get in his way. But he couldn't go after the ball. So, um, you know, Ken, Kenny's a he, he's the best uh, non-starter in America. Is what I would tell you. America's backup.
but he may, I'm, you know, I'm not saying he's not going to start this year. Back to the, you know, you asked about a Dem and, and the dive. What about a Dem and Kenny? Because a Dem can guard anywhere out on the court. That's the beauty of him. And that's what makes him such a great pro prospect. You guys had that uh, mid-range drill there at the end. Uh, I believe 121 was on the scoreboard. Yeah, you got to get 100. You got to get 100. Uh, I guess, what would you think of, I mean, to go 21 over that target? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, that means we didn't practice. I didn't make them practice hard enough. They weren't tired enough. <laughs> See, if I get them really tired, it, then it gets, it gets closer. They had a lot of energy at the end. What's the record? Do you remember? Oh, probably like 128. They were close. Is that the regular way that you end practice, or do you have a variety of different? Uh, of our, yeah, we change it up. Like Some that. we have a different free throw thing that we do at the end as well. What's the low record? <laughs> Bad, eighty, probably eighty. <laughs> probably it's eighty, so yeah, not good. What's, what's the consequence of not getting to hundred? You just got to do, do it, it again. Yeah. Do it again. But around here, we try to do it till we we do things that uh, are going to help win games. You know, as a coach, the minute you accept anything less than that, it's your, your, your program's uh, problems are your fault. Have there been any kind of unexpected developments that you've seen in the practice and maybe things you didn't necessarily anticipate? Oh, uh, no, it's early. Too early for that, I, I'd probably say. Biggest key, people ask me how's practice going, is nobody got hurt. How's, somebody asked me today how's practice today, nobody got hurt. So I wish you guys a happy Friday, the best day of my life. October 6, 2006, Samantha Jean Cronin's birthday. There you go. There you go. All right, guys. Tell her happy birthday. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.